Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another broadcast of Deep Cough and Deep. I'm your host, Jeremy Lopez, and I want to talk to you today about shiftings and happenings. Now, we've heard these words for so many years as buzzwords, have we not? We've known for so long that shift happens, as we say, but we also need to realize that shift happens every moment of the day. Our conscious mind is constantly shifting into a new presentation, into a new uh, alignment, into a new adjustment, into a new receiving mode and, and, and giving out mode. Our spirit is always adjusting uh, to the age of every second that we're moving on, every millisecond that we're beginning to grow. We're continuing to grow within our existence. Every time we do that, there's a shift that takes place of receiving and giving away, of an adjustment of what we're going to begin to to incorporate within our lives from what we're thinking and what we're going to give away in replacing of of that in which we've just presently heard of something new. And so we always have a shifting going on in consciousness. There's always a shifting going on in the spirit realm. There's always a shifting going on within the natural. My my question to all of us is, how are we adjusting to those shiftings? How are we able to look at those shiftings and know that there's new happenings beginning to develop? Everything is beginning to happen to me. What does that mean? Happenings of things that are good, things that are honest and good or poor. We need happenings of the things of the kingdom of God that are constantly developing within our, our, our existence and our life. And therefore, knowing that, we've got to look and, and, and look at the, the, the shifting that's taking place to know how to be able to move with that shifting. And basically, when we know that the shifting is taking place 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, we need to be able to, A, move into that shifting with an awakened mentality. I would say this to you. Find yourself awakened now. In the now moment, there is an awakening. You know, the Spirit of God is breathing and and, and hovering over us 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, not just hovering over us, but moving inside of us to make the adjustments and the alignments that need to happen, that we can begin to move into that new shifting that God is presenting to us. Maybe that we are being uh, presented to by other people. Maybe God's speaking to other people that in that moment, in 5 seconds from now, or in this moment, or an hour from now, I'll have an encounter with somebody who will speak a God particle, God thing, God of God conversation. And instantly all of a sudden I will be confronted with that new awareness of what God is presenting to me through someone else. Because there's always that shifting taking place. And the main thing I tell people is learn to walk in that place of awareness. That you are aware of what is being said to you. You're aware of what is being presented to you. You're aware of knowing that I'm in the presence of God. I'm in the presence of a new revelation. I'm in the presence of a new shifting. I'm in the presence of a new enlightenment. I'm in the presence of a new anointed uh, uh, um, conversation. I'm in the presence of God. And knowing that We've got to learn to realize if I walk in this moment awake, then what happens is I step into the now moment awakened that shows me that in that now moment that I'm awakened, that I will be able to see and evaluate what is being presented to me and I'll be able to know if I had to, how to compartmentalize within my spirit and within my mind to know what I need or what I need to dismiss in my life. See, a lot of times in our lives, a lot of people want new revelation Revelation. We want new things from God, but we're never really looking at the situation to know is what is, is what is lying before us something that we need or was something that we should automatically throw out. And in order to truly know that, we've got to know that if God is doing a new thing, now right now say to yourself, God is doing a new thing. Because you know in your heart that we've said it before, we've heard it, it's become a a popular buzzword, God is doing a new thing. But in actuality, there is always a presentation of a new thing that is being made known to us every moment of the day. And because we are being presented with a new thing, we have to learn to look at that through the eyes of the understanding of God, through the mind of Christ, to know that is that the new thing that God wanted to present to me 
to where it can finally quote unquote happen to me in a new place of happenings or is it something that maybe is futuristic for me to begin to entertain and then move into is it my now thing to move into or is it a futuristic thing to move into or is it something I need to sort of just get rid of see we're so quick to be able to dismiss things that we've never heard before we're very quick in nature to begin to dismiss things because we automatically say you know it's God you know showing me not to take it it's God showing me to accept it it's God showing me to move into this or it's God telling me to run from this and yet we're so quick to say these things but we don't ever stop to realize we're dealing with one of the most powerful things in the universe which is our mind and your mind will literally begin to run your entire life. You are right now listening to this broadcast based on how you're thinking and what you believe. Is it not true? Because you believe in the prophetic, you believe in spirit-filled things, or you believe in spirituality, or you believe in the supernatural, or you believe in a God that is moving today, you believe in a God that is gifts and callings are, are, are so among us and working in us, you believe in the anointing, you believe in these, in these things. And that's why you're drawn or attracted to listen to me on this broadcast, correct? And so knowing that, guess what? Your new thing is always going to come forth out of your hunger and your desperation of what it is you believe that God is wanting to present to you. But we have to be careful to know that if God is delivering to us a new thing and we're being attracted to hear, if you're in the presence of hearing something that is new, don't ever find yourself automatically saying, ooh, because I've never heard heard it before, it's God speaking to me to, to run from it. Or, yes, God is confirming with me I need to listen to this. Maybe because of the fact it's something that you've wanted or you desired to want to incorporate in your life. Or maybe it's, it's something you desire, something that you want to happen or want to see happen within your life. Correct? And let's face reality, folks. That's really how our lives are ran. Our lives are, 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 are run by, ran on that same principle of what a man thinks in his heart. And so what you're looking for in your life, you will find the things you're looking for because of the fact they'll find, you'll find yourself in a place of an agreement within your spirit of some sort or it's something that you're wanting and you're entertaining anyway and so you'll incorporate that thing within your life to say, yes, this is God. Here's what I tell people. If God is wanting to do a new thing in your life, Make sure that the shift takes place by you being a, a, a walking in the place of being awakened, walking in a, an awareness to say, before I throw away or receive, let me truly evaluate this thing. Let me see if what is being presented to me, maybe from maybe to myself and my spirit from God, maybe through someone else, maybe in a service, maybe watching Oprah, maybe watching you know Kenneth Copeland, maybe watching a pastor that I've never thought I would agree with, maybe watching Joseph Prince, and maybe your thinking, or maybe your theology or your belief once said, oop, don't like Oprah, she's new age, and so what happens? You automatically write her off. But yet, even people you've written off could actually still bring quotes to you and a principle to you that, guess what, can set you free. We look at our lives and we say to ourselves, you know, the Word sets me free, but what is the Word? There's a rhema with mixed in that logos. There's a there's a revelation, there's a there's a breath of God, a ruach wind of God. The wind of God is the is the revelatory uh, rhema of God, which means God breathes over us. And God will breathe over us not always through our pastors, not always through the the very leaders that we always listen to. God doesn't bring revelation to us through people we always like, folks. God breathes revelation through whosoever, through the whosoever's of this world, through people who actually have will will, will be Begin to dive in to hear something new. And that new thing might not even be for them, but it could be held in the heavens waiting on you to begin to hear it. And it might take that very split moment for you to begin to tune in to a radio station, tune in to a television station, tune in to somebody that maybe you just don't care for. And all of a sudden, guess what? You're in that moment in the twinkle of an eye where you hear what God wants you to hear. And that one saying, that one principle, that one new phrase, that new word breathed upon you when God brought it to life in you as you heard it, guess what can change your life forever? It is true, folks. One word can change your life forever. And through that, we've got to be open enough to be able to receive of those outside of our network, outside of our community, outside of our covenant with people. 
because we've got to allow God to be who God really is and that is God. God of the universe. And knowing that, we've got to realize God can truly speak to me by moving upon me through a Catholic priest, moving upon me through a Baptist minister, moving upon me through somebody who's out there not even a Christian, somebody out there who maybe is into spiritualism, somebody out there who actually is, you know, could be just a good-hearted person, someone out there to be the Oprah's of the world, someone out there that can be a Holy Ghost man of God, somebody who could be anything and everything Everything. One thing I tell myself and tell other people is we've got to remember this one thing. God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our own thoughts. The way we think is not the strength of how God thinks, folks. The way you think, God made it very plain. The way we think is not on the on the frequency wave, we can call it, you know, if I could say it, those, those terminologies, of how God thinks. And knowing that we've got to be open-minded. See, a lot of times in the Christian world, world, we hate the word open-minded. Oh, that could open you up to anything, brother. But we never stop to realize, are, are you drinking, are you looking at that glass half empty, or are you looking at it half full? I, I've known too many people who are, who are sincerely and severely dedicated to a strong theological-based belief within their denomination, and yet get in total deception, and get off in left field. So see, it doesn't mean just because you are ingrained in a doctrine, or you're ingrained ingrained in a belief system doesn't mean you can't be quote-unquote deceived. It means basically that you've got to learn, no matter who you are and what you are, you've got to be open-minded, open open to the things of the Spirit. Everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual, which means you can learn and tap into the power of what God wants you to know. And guess what, folks? What God wants you to know doesn't always come through the people that, that are part of our organization. doesn't always come through people who are part of our network. You know, I know so many people who are so connected, almost cult-minded to a network of people or a a covenant of of a community of people and yet they don't stop to realize that they don't evaluate their life to step out of themselves to look and say, am I being too close-minded by listening to those that are just like me? You know, we call them precious like faith. You're called to connect with those of precious like faith. But you're also called to allow God to be God, to be His Son. You are a child of God first and foremost before you even are connected to people of precious like faith. Because God is bigger than us. And knowing that God is bigger than us, we have to allow ourselves to lean not to our own understanding. Our own understanding says connect with those that, that, are, that are just like you. Connect with those who believe like you. That's where the revelation's flowing. No. God says, my ways are, are higher than your ways. My thoughts are much higher than your thoughts. Which means you've got to connect to God and let God connect you to the things you need to be connected to and with because that's where you're truly stretched. See, growth doesn't happen from those who believe like you. Contrary to popular belief, folks, growth does not happen to those who believe just like you. Because what you're going to find yourself doing is you will always constantly find yourself going back and forth, back and forth by saying the same phrases, listening to the same things, liking the same preachers, listening and talking to people that will talk to the same person that is your covenant friend and all of a sudden, guess what? All you're doing is is talking the same language. You're stirring up the same emotion. You're stirring up the same belief and God says, come out from among those things and be separate. Don't, you know, it's wonderful to connect with people. We all need to connect with people who who we can relate to. Uh, Amen? We all need to do that. But beside that, folks, Folks, you've got to grow. Beside that, you've got to mature. Beside that, we've got to grow up into sonship and put away childish things. See, children tend to play with children and then they connect automatically. It's the way of the universe. They connect automatically with other kids throughout time that they can relate to. And guess what happens? We end up going to school, do we not? So we go to school and guess what? You sit around people that, guess what, you might not know. Friends that were never raised in your neighborhood, do you not? And so guess what happens? 
God incorporates that in your life. Why? Because He knows you need to be challenged with things that tend to be uncomfortable for you. And so you're surrounded by, your surroundings consist of people that maybe love you, not like you, people who don't know you, or people you don't know. So we get into school, first grade through twelfth grade, and we're connected with people that we've never known before. And then different classes puts us beside other people that we've never heard, never known before. We didn't connect with at one point in our lives. And then we get into twelfth grade, we get into you know uh, high school, and it's a different. The ball game's different, does it not? Why? Because I'm constantly challenging myself. Which actually the school is making me and forcing me challenge myself by sitting me in seats around people that I, maybe I didn't want to sit by. Or maybe my friends are taking this class and I'm having to take this class because I didn't take it last year. See, and then you get into college. You do the same thing. And so remember this. That God will strategically make sure that you are placed in particular places of your life uh, around people that you need, can, you need to learn from. That you can, you can adhere to in the sense of learning and taking from them and understanding what it means to be not just open-minded, but to stretch your ideology, to stretch how you feel, to stretch what you believe. And God will send people that you've never known before. God will send people to you you don't even like, folks, that will tell you, you know what, things in your life life that you're finding yourself saying, wow, I've never looked at that way. Or maybe he's challenging you to learn to love your enemies as you love your neighbor and to love yourself. And so through all of that, what do we do? We graduate out of high school. We get out of college. And all of a sudden, whoo, I'm glad that's over. And so then automatically we find a church and we get into a comfort zone and we stay there the rest of our lives. We find a job and we know that, that it's, the consistency is going to be there now. I'm going to be I'm going to be sitting beside somebody. At first it'll be new, but the rest of the years I'm at my job, probably the rest of my life, I'm going to get to know the people around me and I know the people in my department, know the people who sit around me at church. That's why I like to sit on the left side or the right side. And so we instantly put ourselves in a comfort zone and stay that way the rest of our lives. And God said, did you not remember when I had you at a place where the shift always took place for you, where the challenge was always there to force you, to make you maneuver yourself among those that are different from you, to sit beside those maybe who maybe love you or hate you, or maybe who really doesn't have doesn't really care, uh, you know how how they feel about you or vice versa. Why? Because it challenges us to make a proper, healthy shift in our lives, folks. We all need a healthy shift in our lives, and shift will happen. But a lot of times we control the shift, and a lot of times it's not always healthy to control the shift. And so, what I would encourage you to do today. Find yourself to be open-minded. Learn from those that maybe God will bring to you that maybe you've never heard of before. Step out by faith. What is faith? Faith, according to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, which means the things you're looking for, you cannot see in the natural. Now, here's where I love it, and here's why I will close with this, with this little broadcast today for you. If, if, if faith is speaking of things that, you have, that has not been seen, how come it's not being seen in your life? Because faith, because your spirit that holds the faith is saying, the reason why I'm believing for something outside of what I, what I can't see is simply because of that fact that it's not being seen. So what faith does is faith will maneuver you to the place where the people or the things or whatever it is your environment will bring to you can begin to make your faith become whole. So if faith is an operation in your life right now, then faith is saying to you, it's things that you are not surrounding yourself with. Now that will set you free, folks. Faith is saying to you, I'm hoping and praying and I'm wanting things within your life, but it's things I'm having to believe of by myself, which is faith, because of the fact it's not being seen. It's not evident within your existence and your reality. So faith says, look, I know what you need, and what you need doesn't, or doesn't exist with in your reality because it's not it's it's in, it's in the unseen. And so faith is a, is a substance of things that you're hoping for. Who's hoping for? It? Not your natural part of you, but what your spirit is hoping for. Faith is the substance of what you are hoping for, what your spirit is really longing to have. It's the evidence of things not seen around you. So guess what faith is saying to you right now? Faith is saying, I want you to have a healthy shift. And the healthy healthy shift will bring the happenings to your life. But the healthy 
shift, in order to make make things happen, you've got to begin to move and flow like a river into the areas of the unknown that you're scared to tap into or touch on because you are so afraid to because it breaks your comfort zone. It gets you out of a place of the unknown of where all your buddies, your pals, your friends, talking your same language, moving in the same woohoo or whatever you want to say it, language that you're using. It breaks the mold to get you out of that environment sometimes. And sometimes it's very healthy for you for God to be able to say good. Because within your community, I, I had no one who was having an ear to hear and an eye to see to know what it is I'm trying to relate to you. Because they're a lot like you. So what do we do? We surround ourselves with people who are like us. And whether we don't like it or not, we have to look around us to realize we've got to stretch ourselves to get out of our comfort zone of people who are thinking like us, who believe like us. Sometimes it's healthy for us. Why? So God can speak the unknown and the things that your spirit is hoping for and the places that it's not being seen in your life to where He can maneuver you around those people that may be, or that, are, that are in the unknown right now in your life that can be known to you to where your faith can finally be made whole and cause you to grow in things that you've never heard before or previously have not gotten a hold of. So folks, be a water walker. One of the things I hear the charismatic move say so much in Pentecostals is we want to be water walkers. We're going to move by faith and know that God's doing stuff. But you know what they do? They move among their own circles all day long. They move inside of their circles all day long. And they call the same people and talk to them on the phone. They connect with the same people that move in the same supernatural way, way of believing that they do. And they move in their same little circle. And that is so, so not healthy for you. Because what happens is, you've got to be able to get what you've gotten. Okay, Get what you've got in the midst of that circle of those people who who can build you up and motivate you and reaffirm and confirm the things that you're hearing is true. And then you're going to have to take that out to people that have never heard it before. And then then sometimes put yourself... What I tell people is this. Put one foot in in the area of the unknown of people you've never known before. Take a couple days, a couple of weeks every once in a while. Maybe once a month. Put your foot and your mind and your life into the unknown of places and people that normally you don't associate with. Because you'd be amazed how much you will grow from them. Amazed how much you will learn from them. And God does not always speak. In fact, most of the time, God does not even speak among people that are actually just like us, that are a comfort zone. That's why God used a donkey to speak, actually to someone because it was out of a comfort zone. Who would ever thought a donkey would actually speak on behalf of, hey look, don't beat on don't beat me up. Don't beat on me. Are you with me? And how many knows that there's kings in the Old Testament that God used to speak through and, and, and to people. And yet who would have ever thought God would use those people out of those people's comfort zones? Who would have ever thought that God would say would send a prophet to King David, knowing that King David could have that prophet put to death instantly and go out of his comfort zone to prophesy the word of the Lord to him about you need to repent. You've, caught, you've committed murder or adultery. Who would have ever thought that? Notice the people in Jesus' life, folks. Notice that Jesus every day had a healthy lifestyle by moving from city to city, place to place, community to community. He wanted to make it known as the lifestyle of a Christ follower, and that is to be in places that you're not familiar with. Be in places that might tear you up and spit you out. Be in places that you can learn from and grow from out of your own environment environment of existence. Be in places. And so he learned from people as people learned from him. He learned how to treat people of different backgrounds, ethnic groups, situations, uh, uh, beliefs, whatever. He learned from them how to treat them as well as giving them a powerful message that can change and shift their own life that would never be the same again. He hung around other people that were not like him. And so when you look at your life, examine your life right now and tell yourself, am I already, have I already automatically made a, a cultish mentality within my existence to only surround myself by those who are like me? You know, I, I hear this a lot with people. You know, people always say... Um, why do people hang around people that are maybe just white or just black or just this or just that? Why? Because they found comfort in it. 
You find comfort in people who believe like you. You know, whether it's a sexuality, whether it's a gender, whether it's a, a race, or whether it's a belief. Guess what? They always tend to hang around people just like themselves. Why? Because it's so comfortable. And it's so, I can relax in this environment. And I can be safe here. Guess what, folks? That is contrary so much to what Jesus talked about. And He doesn't want you to be around people that that will make you feel comfortable. We all need that. Don't get me wrong. We all need that in our lives. But what makes a proper healthy shift in my life is when I shift into the going to places that God wants me to go. Surround myself with people that are different from me a lot of times in my life to where I can be well-rounded. Folks, listen to me now. You've heard me say this before and I'll say it again. Paul said what? To be all things to all men that he might win some. What does that look like? It means sometimes you have to learn to be all things to all people people. And you can't be all things unless you're surrounding yourself, guess what, with all people. Are you with me? So get out of your comfort zone. And you know what? I tell people this all the time. You know how I can tell if you're a true leader? Not by what you prophesy, not how loud you can shout, not by the sword you can you can wave in the air. None of that means anything at all when it deals with being the Jesus, being the Christ. And like like one of the greatest apostles ever who understood the principle, I've got to get out there to be all things to people that I'm not familiar with. I've got to be all things to all men that I might win some. That is where the power of the supernatural lies, folks. It's time for us to be supernatural people and not always do a demonstration of or an act of something that is, quote-unquote, we say, taking place in the Spirit around us by doing something in the natural when in essence, in the spiritual, we're not even doing that thing at all. Because in the spiritual, the spirit realm is wanting you to be and manifest what is happening in the spirit realm. And the spirit realm is full of activity. It's full of it's full of stretching because it is the stretch. It's full of plowing because it is the plow. It is full of eternity because it is the eternals. And so knowing that, you've got to realize if you want to be the spirit of the supernatural spirit realm that you know you're called to be because your spirit having a human experience then you're going to have to demonstrate that within your walk of life. And, and, and the spirit realm does not know familiarity. It doesn't. It doesn't know comfort. It doesn't know uh, different uh, departments. It has nothing to do with com- compartmentalizing anything. Spirit realm does not com- compartmentalize anything. Why? Because there are no departments in the spirit, folks. It's one big, huge, eternal it. <laughs> That's how the best way to explain the, the, the supernatural, the spirit realm. And so because of that, if you want to be spiritual and supernatural, you're going to have to become the supernatural, the spirit realm. And, what, and the way to do that is learn to maneuver yourself into the all. When you maneuver yourself into the all, then and only then have you truly fulfilled the call and the role of what the definition is of the supernatural or the spirit realm. Hey folks, I want to encourage you today. I um, thank you so much for tuning into our broadcast. It means a lot to me. Also, we've just introduced a brand new thing. And here's what I'd like for you guys to do. Go to my personal brand new website called nowisyourmoment.com nowisyourmoment.com I would love for you to sign up to receive our daily newsletters. Now our daily newsletter at nowisyourmoment.com is not like identitynetwork.net identitynetwork.net is our prophetic resource company who is, that is one of the world's largest prophetic resource websites in the entire world. But And we do deal with articles, we deal with product and schools and courses, but the nowisyourmoment.com is my personal website. It's my baby, so to say. And on that website, every day, the only thing you will get is what I consider, which I'm starting today on, is a prophetic word for that day. It's a word of the Lord for that day. So every day you will get from me a sentence or two, that's it, which is going to be the prophetic word of the now word that God is saying in that day today to where you can look and say, you know what, I have a reflection today of what it is that Jeremy Lopez brought forth of what God is speaking to him in the now moment for this day. So I want to encourage you, sign up with us. You're not going to get, definitely, definitely you won't get more than one email a day. And it's only going to be a simple phrase. 
That's it. It'll be a powerful principle. That's it. A powerful revelatory saying or of, of Scripture maybe. That's it. Of what it is that God is wanting you to know in this today, in this now moment. So please, go today. Sign up. Nowisyourmoment.com When you do, you will be able to receive every day just a, a powerful prophetic word of the Lord for that day. Also, one thing I will encourage you on is if you sign up and you get other people to sign up and you show me that you that these people have signed up from you, then what I will do is I will give you a free ebook. Uh, I'm actually coming out with a brand new book in one week, folks, so get ready. In a week, week and a half, our, my brand new book, which is the thickest book I've ever had. It's over 325 pages, folks, a thick book. It's called Prophetic Transformation. You will love it. It's going to be very in-depth, de- in, in, in revelatory, powerful things things of prophetic transformation that takes place within a person's life. Folks, you're going to love it. You're going to you're going to want to pass it around to all your friends and tell them to get their own copies. And so what I will do is I'll give you a discount on the book when it comes out. If you get people to sign up and you tell them to tell me, hey, I signed up under so and so. I want to be able to bless you folks. And I definitely want you incorporated in your everyday walk of life to get the prophetic word of the Lord every single day. All right? So go to now is your moment. Sign up today. Now is your moment.com. Sign up today. And I want to tell you first and foremost as well, thank you for being a part of, uh, of this listening audience on Deep Cough and Deep. We have thousands upon thousands of listeners who take the time out of their day to listen to our broadcast. I also want to encourage you. We just launched out our brand new school, folks. School of the Prophetic Word. Folks, you cannot miss this. School of the Prophetic Word. You can get the entire course as a digital digital download instantly for just $99, folks. $99. You'll get the entire school digitally downloaded, which is about 13 or 14 CDs, DVD, a book, all the stuff you need that will cater to the nucleus of a prophetic word, what a prophetic word is. You will hear things you have never, ever heard before in your life on a prophetic word. I want to encourage you. Go today. Go right now. And, and order digitally downloaded the School of the Prophetic Word. You can find that school on identitynetwork.net. Hey, God bless each and every one of you. Until our next broadcast, have an amazing, amazing time with Jesus.